Hey guys, welcome back. Another fun day of optical illusions coming your way. Um, before we get started with our next practice of op art, we're going to learn a little bit more about the history of opt art. So are you guys ready for this? I hope you are, because here we go. Let's learn about op art. Not to be confused with pop art. Op art stands for optical art art that uses optical illusions. These are pieces that trick the brain into thinking something is happening that couldn't really happen in real life. The name op art was coined by Time Magazine in 1964. The first op artist I want to talk about is Bridget Riley, who was born in London in 1931. Her father was a printer who owned his own business. She didn't have much schooling until attending college and as an adult she worked in a glassware shop, as an illustrator, and as an art teacher. In 1958 she saw the work of Jackson Pollock and was inspired. She was also inspired by the scientific dot style of George Seurat. Around 1960 she began her signature op art style. Some of the best known op art is black and white, geometric lines and shapes that create the illusion of movement. Another op artist is Victor Vasarly. He often used colorful paintings to make 3D illusions by having clever uses of color or shapes that bend as if they are popping out of the painting. My favorite op artist is M.C. Escher. He was born Maurice Cornelius Escher on June 17, 1898 in the Netherlands. He was a sickly child who had trouble in school but was very good at art. In 1922, Escher went traveling and in Spain was inspired by the Moorish architecture at the palace called Alhambra. The decorations in this architecture are very geometric and it has tessellations. A tessellation is an interlocking pattern that repeats with no gaps. At first, he drew very realistic art of the many places he visited, but he became more and more interested in the strange things you can do using math in art. He made impossible structures that twisted crazily in a way that wouldn't work in normal space and gravity. He used tessellated designs, and they're some of his most famous and impressive and recognizable works. Check out some of his art here. Uh, here. This one. This, oh, okay. These, this is a beautiful work. I like the details here. Very good, very impressive. Look at all the effort that it must have taken. Mm hmm interesting. In April of 1966, Martin Gardner featured Escher's art in his Mathematical Games column in the magazine The Scientific American. Escher became famous with math lovers uh, for his wild art that used math to bend the laws of physics. Another intellectual who did op art was Akiyoshi Kitaoka, um, who would make very bright, colorful, and almost hard to look at op art that tricks your brain with the bright overlapping colors. Let's look at some examples of op art. Maybe this one, this. These are older, newer. Some simple, some more complex. Traditional, very strange. Okay, guys. Bye. So hopefully that gives you some insight into how op art began. As you can tell, it's actually a bit um, newer of a genre of art, which is kind of cool, too. Anyway, for today, we are going to be creating a, a different form of op art than we've been doing so far. We've got the Penrose Triangle, some different geometric shapes. Um, but now we're going to be making a spider web. So that's what we're going to be doing next. <coughs> and depending on how we design the spider web, it can either look like it's bulging out towards us in space, or there's going to be an alternate way we can make it too, where it kind of looks like 
Ooh, and it's like almost like a wave pool in the design. So I'll show you how to do it either way and you get to decide what works best for you. So we are going to follow the presentation and I'm going to kind of flip flop back and forth between our views so you can see what the presentation is showing us to do and you can also see my progress as well as we get going here. All right. So if you need to come on into our slides and look at the presentation yourself, you can do that or feel free to, of course, always rewind um, and rewatch any parts of this video you'd like to as well. All right, let's check it out. So you can see this, uh, this is going to be sort of what it looks like when we're done. Of course, you're going to add your own touch and your own flair to it, but this is where we're going. All right, so first things to know um, is how we place our paper. Um, if we're placing it the wide way, like how you would sort of take a photo of something if you were trying to get the whole landscape, right? Like the whole horizon line. That is what we call a landscape orientation. That's the direction the paper is facing. So this would be landscape. Portrait is, as you can imagine, like how you would imagine if you were getting your portrait, your picture taken, like for school pictures or something, it's going to go this way, right? So landscape and portrait. You'll hear us referencing these directions multiple times throughout, throughout our art course. Um, and sometimes it's really important that we have it a certain way versus the other. But in this case, you're going to see that it can be either landscape or portrait for this particular drawing that we're doing today. Because really, for this one, even as you turn it, it'll kind of work in any given direction. So either landscape or portrait starts uh, or works well for this. Um, in the, the demonstration that you're seeing here, they're going to be doing it landscape. So if that's easier for you, go ahead and start yours off landscape. I'm going to be doing mine in portrait just to kind of show you that it does, in fact, work either way. All right, here we go. First step, put a dot in the center of your piece of paper or center-ish. It doesn't have to be perfectly center. Look at this. You guys are already succeeding. Good job. Good job. All right, next step, draw a curved line from the dot in the center of the paper all the way out to the outer edge. So that's what it looks like on that piece of paper. Let me transition over. Here's what it looks like on mine. See, I'm doing portrait, but same thing. All right. Next up, do another line. Notice how this one, the curve goes in the same direction, right? Same direction as that other one. Um, it's not like it's bowing out away. They're kind of both going in the same direction. It almost looks like a, a shark fin or something, doesn't it? Okay, so continuing on, we're going to do another one. And it doesn't necessarily matter whether you're going on top or to the side or down. Um, you just kind of keep on going. Let's see, we'll put this one. I'm going to have this one go almost directly into the corner, down to my dot. Here's what mine's looking like so far. Ooh, pretty, right? Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Something else to consider, once you get to that center spot, do you notice how now, at some point, I am going to need to have it where they both bow out like that? Um, so that's what I'm going to do once we get towards like the center of the piece of paper. It doesn't matter whether it's landscape or portrait. So now that I'm at that center point, you can see I've done this. Now I'm going to follow this curve, continuing on this side of the paper. So following that same curve, and you can see in our screen here, we're just going to keep on going all the way around. So I'm going to make a couple more, bum, 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 and boom. Okay, there we go. Next up, go like this, boop, and pick one of the spots on your piece of paper. Let me do it. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to start with this guy over here. And I am going to make basically like a rainbow or a U, and it's going to go up towards center, and the um, outer lines are going to go towards the outside of the piece of paper. So it looks something like that. 
and that, and we're going to continue on like so as we go all the way to the outer edge of our piece of paper. As you get further away, you might have to end it because, you know, in reality, this line would continue, right? If it was to, if the paper was wider than it is, but I'm just going to have to stop it towards the edge there. And we'll see the same thing as we're looking at our slides. Boom, boom, all the way through the end. Okay? Next thing is going to be to do it on the next one over. Now, I do want to show you that there is an alternate way you could do this. If you want to have it more of that like, ooh, ooh, waviness to it, instead of where each one kind of bumps out towards us, um, you could go like this. Okay, so see how this one, now my U, the tip of the U kind of goes out towards the edge of the paper and then the edges of each U come towards center. So you could do that and that's going to once again give us more of like a la 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 woo effect instead. Um, so I am going to show that, um, but this is what it would look like once we finish if we do the, the first way shown. Um, and I'm going to show you what it looks like the other way. Now, one thing to notice is we want to make sure um, as we get towards those lines that go from the center dot towards the edge of the paper, we want to make sure that those, those webbings all connect as it meets those lines. So if you kind of see what that looks like, it meets here. It's not like one is here and then the other one's halfway down. Okay, that's going to help add to our optical illusion, making sure those lines connect. And to make sure we fully understand that, let me just show what I'm talking about here. So as I am thinking about where the, the next line goes, I'm not going to start it here, right? Because right here doesn't match up with either of these lines. I'm going to start it where this line ends. I'm going to bring it there and there. So you can see I'm doing the wavy, like woo, woo, wave cool way of doing this. There we go. And this one might go off the paper a little bit but then it's going to come back here. Notice how it goes from like smaller and it gets wider. Like there's more space in between as I get closer to the edge. Now this one I'm going to want to flip flap the other way. And zoom. Zoom. Yes, I do always make noises as I create artwork. It's very fun. All right, so continuing on, I'll do another one just so you can kind of get a feel for what this method, if you choose to go this alternate route, what that will look like. So you can see how it's kind of like, whoa, whoa. If that makes you sick, maybe this is not a good option for you. But you get to choose for yourself. Okay, so I could continue in that fashion or if I wanted to do the original, I can continue in this fashion. So you can see this one is where it all goes out. But I still want to make sure that I'm starting those lines at the same spot where it left off. Now that one I might not be able to do. In fact, I might just only see a little bit of that there and not see the edges on that guy. And now when we get to this point, we gotta be careful because it needs to match boop, boop, both sides. <clears throat> so pay attention to that. There we go. This goes to that one. This guy down here is gonna go to that one. Whoop, and this one we don't really see where it is, so. Sometimes it goes off the page, and that's okay. All right, there we go. We've got our finished spider web. So we definitely need to make sure we're getting the finished spider web in today, but you can see that it doesn't take all that long to complete the spider web itself, okay? So if we want to continue on to what's technically next class's assignment, but the, the, the coloring in part does take quite a bit longer. Um, this is what we're going to be working on. I'll show you just in a hot minute here how to do that. But this little section here took me about three minutes. And look how many there are to do. Oh, that's a lot, right? So if we want to get a head start on that, I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek, a little preview of that today because that way if you choose to do your 30 minutes outside of art class by working on coloring it in, you would have that option, okay? So we're gonna let the coloring magic begin. So one thing to think about as you're coloring it in versus just choosing random colors is, do I wanna have any of my color theory stuff in there? Maybe you choose all primary colors. 
Maybe you're choosing all secondary. Maybe you alternate where it's like primary, secondary, primary, secondary. Maybe you do that. I don't know. Maybe it goes primary, secondary, primary. There's so many options, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Get creative and have fun. Maybe you do all warm colors, right? All those warm fire sun type colors. Maybe you do all cool colors where it's that, that lake and the water and cool breezes. Maybe you do that. It's up to you. Um, but we want to make sure that as we are shading it in, we want to make sure that we are doing the techniques that we've been learning for shading as far as like how hard we're pushing down with our pencil, um, the direction that we're going in to, to have it. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So that it goes from darkest on the outside to lightest on the inside. So it's going to go dark, light, dark, dark, light, dark, dark, light, dark. Or if it's going the other way, it's still dark, light, dark, right? dark, light, dark, like that. Because that's going to give it the illusion of popping out and popping in. Um, so, and actually I should, I should actually rephrase that. If you're doing this way, you might even want it to go light, dark, light. Sorry about that. Because that's going in. The further back it goes, we want it to look like it is getting darker. Okay. Um, so consider those techniques and I'm going to show you guys that as well. Um, but yeah, just making sure we're remembering to use those techniques as far as um, making it look like it's coming out in space and going back into space too. And we're going to continue doing that. So Here's what it could look like when it's done, but remember you get to add your own personal touch, your own personality into it. If you choose, you don't even want to alternate colors like this. There are other ways um, and other techniques as well. In fact, I'm going to show you one right now. So I am choosing uh, warm colors for this strip here, and I'm actually going to do it almost as if it's a color gradient um, within it. So I'm going to go from, let's see, where did I put those? Here we go. So these are all warm colors, right? I'm going to start with kind of the more peachy here, then pink, then a reddish pink, then red, and it's going to continue all the way down to more of like a magenta down here. So that's what I'm choosing to do for this guy. Um, remember, pencil technique and pencil holding matters, um, and it can help with how, how it looks. So I like to hold my pencil like this, especially when I'm doing the lighter layers, and I hold it out back here because there's less pressure when I'm holding my pencil like this and I have it flipped here. So sometimes I'll hold my pencil like that, but usually I hold it like this. We're getting more surface area by holding it this way than if I had hold, held it like how we write our name. Okay, so holding my pencil just like that. And here we go. I'm gonna color this little guy in here. I'm gonna give it all that first base layer of super duper light. Um, remember as you're doing this, we're kind of thinking this is a building process, right? Never would I ever expect to get it looking exactly how I want it to look by just putting one layer on there. I'm going to have to do multiple layers. So it might even be hard to see on the camera there, but I've got my lightest layer down. I'm going to move my hand closer towards the tip of the pencil. It's going to automatically cause me to put more pressure on the pencil and I'm going to start towards those outer edges where I know I want it to be darker and start working with that and on this edge too don't be afraid to turn your paper you guys I turn my paper so much as I'm coloring to make sure that we don't get any of that lininess we don't want it to look liney when it's done I also lick my lips a lot as I create artwork. Does anyone else do that? I need to put on chapstick constantly whenever I'm doing artwork because I'm constantly licking my lips. It must be just like a concentration thing. All right, moving my hand in a little bit closer. I want to get some of these real dark areas towards the edges. This is a tiny little space, so it is hard to get all those values from lightest to dark within this tiny little space. But we're doing it. It's happening, you guys. It's happening. Here we go. Here's some more. All right. Not perfect, but you guys can see where we're going with that. And I'll do another one in here, too. Let's see. Where was my next color? Was this one, I think? Yeah. That looks right. So once again, holding my pencil, 
farther back and giving it that lightest shade first and to prevent lininess I am going to give her a little turn I like to almost it's almost like making um, an X is one one way one the other way there we go so we've got that lightest layer in Shoop, bring it down get a little closer and start adding some of those darker values towards the edges like so and closer yet get towards those edges even more I'm going really quickly you guys feel free to take your time but we do have a lot to get through I suppose so I guess don't take too much time <laughs> but definitely you know feel free to take a little more time than what I'm doing here I'm going to switch it because now I'm going to be pushing down a lot of pressure. So now you can see I'm actually holding it more like how when I would write my name. Sometimes when I push it a lot of pressure, I feel like I can do that a little bit better with my pencil flipped in this direction. Play around, experiment with that, and see what works best for you. As artists, we all have different techniques that work well for us. We can start to see how by doing this, I'm getting that illusion of it coming whoop, out towards us in space so the more something comes towards us in space the lighter it gets the further back it goes into space the darker it gets so always keep that concept in your mind as you are creating and coloring this in so once again technically this portion of it will be reintroducing and reminding you of tomorrow the coloring part but if you want to get that head start on it today because this is going to take a lot longer than just creating the spider web you go right ahead and do that you get a head start on that portion. Not a problem. I am so excited to see how these come along. We'll see you next time.